Hey you guys, welcome to I Am Redemption. I'm your girl Aunt Kev and hey hey hey. <laughs> okay, y'all gotta excuse me, I sound crazy because I, I woke up and my throat was crazy. It was feeling crazy last night. So this will be working with and y'all love me anyway, okay? All right, so I wanna talk about something. Do you know that one of God's desires for us is to serve him without a shadow of doubt? Like, he wants you to take him at his word, to believe him. That if he says he's going to come for you and rescue you, he's going to do that. If he says he's going to bless you, then he's going to do that. He wants you to believe what he tells you. Bible, let's get to it. All right, so Luke 1, 73 through 75, and this is the NLT version. I'm trying to keep it in the NLT version, even though I know majority of my Bible in the NIV and the King James Version, but we can all, you know, relearn it some other version. Why not the NLT? It's not going to hurt you. All right. So Luke 1, 73 through 75, NLT, and it says, The covenant he sworn with an oath to our ancestor Abraham. We have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear and holiness and righteousness for as long as we live. You heard that? Serve God without fear. Without fear. All right. Um, oh, I forgot. We got our, our our house scriptures here. <laughs> Don't judge me. I just forgot. We're going to get to it right now. <laughs> Romans 8 and 28. And it is, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who have who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. I'm going to read it again. And we know that God causes everything, everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Oof. Next one, Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. You know what? Um, when I was uh, writing down the scriptures that I would need for this video, when I was writing down Jeremiah 1 and 5, he said, um, and appointed you as my prophet. He didn't say the world's prophet. He said my prophet. So if I sent you, I'm the one that's going to qualify you. I'm the one that's going to work it all together. If I sent you, it has to go well. It has to work. I, 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 oh my goodness. Okay. But yeah, anyway, so I don't get off topic because y'all know I will. Y'all know I will. All right. Anyway, so back to what I was saying. I just forgot those two to say in the beginning, right? So God wants us to serve him without fear. Um, you know who does that? Now, David. David does that so, and I'm not going to say, I want to say he does it effortlessly, but the reason why he does it is because he has, him and God has history. Him and God has history. So we're going to go to one of my all-time favorites. And it's probably the first story that I've learned about the Bible. And that's probably why it's my favorite. We're going to go to uh, 1 Samuel 17. and um, 1 Samuel. Yes, the chapter is 1 Samuel. And that is when um, David goes against Goliath. Uh, I know. So, uh, uh, uh. Anyway, so now... Let me explain this before we get off into scripture. Now, the reason why David can go up against Goliath, I don't know what that was, but it was flying next to me. That's crazy. The reason why David can go against Goliath is because, and he says in the scripture, is because he's had history with God. God has came through for him over and over and over again. Oof. Yes, he did. So 
oh my goodness you know what let's just get into it okay let's just get into it we're gonna go to it right now um da -da 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 -da. let's go we're gonna i'm not gonna read you the entire uh the entire chapter i'm trying to keep these videos not too long so let's do this so we're gonna start at first samuel chapter 17 verse 32 and this is when david talks about his history with god so first samuel Mm, 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 mm. I just want y'all to know, First Samuel is in the Old Testament. Um, it is in the beginning of the Old Testament. All right, I just want to make sure because some people may not know. And I, you don't need to feel bad about you not knowing, okay? So I'm going to read it. And it's go, it starts at um, verse 32. And it says... David, this is David talking to Saul. He says, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And and he's been, and he's been a man of war since his youth. You, but you see what I mean, though? David, David's just like, no, I got this. Like, you don't even know. I got this. Like, he light work. I'm telling you, he light work. And Saul's just like, don't be ridiculous. Like, Saul starts pulling up this little Philistine's history. Okay. But see, now that you don't let me know this little Philistine history, let me let you know me and God's history. Okay. Come on, let's go. Verse 34. And it reads, but David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goat. He says, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Oh, pause. Because what? And this is what I mean. Okay. And uh, was it the last video or the video before? <sighs> we talked about building new history. Um, history has this thing of, history can be a good thing or a bad thing. Let's say that. Okay. But if you're, if you, if you only know your history to be bad, then you're always thinking negative thoughts because of your history. Okay. But you know, God is a person that will start over at any given time if it don't go right. Okay. Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Right. Okay. He floods the earth and start uh, creation over. Okay? He does not mind starting over. So we, we going to build new history. We going to build new history with God. If you have already, side note, like if you have already been a person who knows how God has shown up from you, live from that history. Take inventory. Look back. Lord, I've noticed that you've, you've come through for me here, here, and here, and here. Okay, the reason why he's done that is so that we can live fearlessly. 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 Okay, and if you are not aware of how God has came through in your life, baby, get on your knees and ask God, Lord, show me, reveal to me where you have come into my life and you've shown up. You have not because you ask not. So ask God, where have you shown up in my life? Show me history. Lord, feed, give me faith to, to even start new history with you. Um, the word of God in uh, Romans 10 and 17 says, So faith comes from, from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. So in order to get that faith, you got to read your word. You got to read your word. Um, when I needed to up my faith for the things that I believe God last year, I started reading the miracles that Jesus did. I didn't care what the miracle was, was about. But at one point, I started looking for miracles that was immediately. Because I needed to believe when God told me immediately. Open your Bible. Go to Google. 
type in the miracles that Jesus did, whatever scriptures they give you, open your Bible, locate those scriptures, read those things, eat on that, okay? That is how you're going to build up your faith. Build up your faith by reading God's word, all right? So now we have we have read his God's and David's history, okay? Um, oof. Jesus, that felt crazy. Uh, we, uh, so, uh, David has told Saul, um, about him and God's history. And now we're going to move on to the next section because this is important as well. Verse 38, and it says, Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like for he had never worn such he had never worn such things before i can't go in these he pro he protested to saul i'm not used to to them so david took them off off again he picked up five smooth stones from the stream and put them into his shepherd's bag then armed only with his his um shepherd staff and a sling he started across the valley to fight the philistine okay pause 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 okay for my people who's already done business with god before you've already got history okay look 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 and your in in your next one stick to what god has given you work what god has already given you what God has trained you in, that's what you take into battle. Don't go off letting people tell you what you need to do and God ain't tell you that. Like, don't do that. That's that's guaranteed failure. Stick with what God tells you to do. However God has, has taught you to go into battle, to believe him for what for whatever, you need to stick to what God has shown you. If God has had you doing X, Y, and Z, then that is what you do. Don't let people come out here and try to give you new direction. Your direction will always, God is the one that trains you for what's coming ahead. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. God, don't let nobody else tell you to pick up nothing that God ain't tell you to pick up. Don't let God tell you to advertise in a certain way that God ain't tell you to advertise. Let God lead you because God is the one that's going to guarantee and fight this battle for you. God is guaranteed to fight this battle for you. So stick to what God gives you. Stick to what God tells you. Stick to what God taught you. I can only do this because I stick to what God has, has taught me. I don't go off trying to do what other people tell me I should do or how I should talk. Like people tell me a lot of times that since I work at the vitamin shop that I should come on this channel and start talking about vitamins. But God ain't telling me to talk about no vitamins. Him said to come on here and proclaim my word and that's what I do. Okay, so stick to what God has given you. All right, now let's move on. Let's move on, move on, let's move on. Verse 41, verse 41, let's go. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield, with his, with his shield bearer ahead of him, snaring and content at this <laughs> rudy faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David. That you can't that you come to me with a stick, and he cursed David by the name of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. Uh, Goliath yelled, <laughs> Okay, so, um, I want you to know that yes, people are gonna say stuff, um, people are gonna intimidate you, um, your circumstance is gonna try to intimidate you, uh. People are going to um, think less of you. They're going to like, what's, what am I trying to say? They're going to underestimate you. Maybe because your your start point, maybe because your size, maybe because your education. But um, don't take that bait. Don't let nobody back you into a corner. When God called you, know that God called you for a reason. Okay? If you don't trust you, trust what God put in you. Because God trusts what he put in you. Um, I never thought that I could speak because I stumble. Um, at times I stutter. Um, at times I go off track. And y'all have seen that. 
but I still push through it because if God called me, I have to conquer. This is my lane, okay? I know, I know the lane that God has made for me, he designed for me, I'm going to conquer that thing, okay? So even when I have these hiccups, I'm still going to push for it. Let me, let me tell you why. I wrote it down for you. I came, I came ready. I'm telling you, okay? Number one, first and foremost, Philippians 1 and 6. And it says, and I am certain that God who began the good work within, within, and I make it personal, within me, will continue his, his work until, uh, until it is finished on the day, on the day when Jesus Christ returns. Okay. So first of all, I know that when my God starts something, he going to finish it. We have history. Okay. We got history. He always, when he starts something in my life, he always finishes it. No matter what it is. The only way that this work goes on pause is when I get up. When I get up, then yeah, it go on pause. And it's not because of him. It's because of me. I've gotten out of place. Okay. All right. And then y'all know our scriptures, Roman 8 and 28. Let's read it together. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Are you in your purpose? Are you doing what God called you to do? It don't matter what it looked like. Are you there? Your purpose might look like you get in, you start praying. Your purpose might look like you um, reading the word of God. Get where God wants you to be. Get where he's calling you to be. Once you start there, he is guaranteed to take you, okay? Stop rebelling. Stop taking your time. You don't have all day to make the choice whether or not you want to serve God. Pick which, pick this day. Who are you going to serve, okay? Who are you going to serve? You don't got all day. It's a choice that you make and you stand by. Even when situations come and try to rock you, if God, if you make God your anchor, you are going to succeed. It don't matter. God is not surprised about your shortcomings or what you think is shortcomings. The word says he used the foolish things to, let me get it right for you. Let me get it right for you. I ain't read that verse in a minute. Hold on. <clears throat> Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 27. It might not be the NLT version, but you can always go there and, and read it, okay? This isn't the... Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Let me see how I can find it on this thing. Let's go. Oh, NLT. Instead, God chose... God chose things the world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. Come on now. So even if you think what you got small, even if you think it don't amount to nothing, even if you think it's foolish, baby, God's going to use that. He works all things together. All things. All things. Everything. He didn't make no exception. He said, I'll work all things. Let's go. All right. Come on now. All right. Come on. Let's get back to our scripture. What was we started at? Uh, verse 45. That's what we at. Verse 45. Verse 45. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, David replied to, uh, replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, the Lord will conquer you, uh-huh, uh-huh, and I will kill you, uh-huh, uh-huh, and I will cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in, in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescued his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. Come on. Come on, David. First of all, I'm telling you, David decided I'm going to live from the history with God. Okay. All right. Now, that, that all that I just read from you from 41, from 41 to 44, that is powerful. 
that that is pop 41 to what was it i lied 45 to 47 First Samuel. that was powerful okay powerful oh my goodness why did you move i didn't need you to move go back i had doing things on your own first of all he let he let his enemy know who sent me who sent me okay who sent me jeremiah one and five jeremiah one and five come on now i set you apart and i appointed you as a prophet to the nations first of all he said somebody sent me okay god sent me tell yourself god sent me he said i set you apart okay he already knew you. He already know what he had plans for you. I set you apart. And he already told you that no word that come out of his mouth can come back to him void. It has to accomplish what is what he sent it out to do. It just has to work. Come on, y'all. All right. Then it says, um, he moves on. Hi, sister. And then it says, uh... Where was I? So he lets him know that even though you come against me with all these swords and whatever, and whatever, that don't even matter to me. You ain't doing nothing. Like, that's light work. Okay? He goes on to tell the people, to tell the, this big old Philistine how God is going to defeat him. What's going to happen? What's going to take place? Okay? He let it be known. Okay? Now, I want to read y'all the rest of it, but I'm going to tell you what happens, okay? David charges. The Philistine charges um, towards David as well. David takes one slingshot. Let that bad boy go. It sinks into the Philistine's forehead, and he's down for the count. David, like he said, was going to take his head off, and he did, Okay? All right. What I think is funny is, you know, um, saw that same one that told David that he's a little boy and that this this um, Philistine had just been fighting since he was um, in his youth. He took that Philistine's um, head and sword right back to um, to Saul because you told me that I was a little boy, but God told me in Jeremiah one to don't say I'm a little boy, okay? Because if he sent me, I'm going to do what he told me I was going to do, okay? That's the place God wants us to live from, okay? The history between what you and God have conquered. This is why it's so important that you have really got to realize in your season what it is that God is trying to show you. We get so caught off and carried away by what we're going through that we don't actually realize what God is trying to show us. Remember, things only happen to you because God allows it. God only allows what he's going to use. So you got to make it your business to say, Lord, in this season, in this place where I'm at, what are you trying to show me? What history are we building? All right? Make it your business to get up in there, okay? All right. Um, there's one scripture that I did not use. But I'm still going to give it to you. All right. And that is Luke 18 and 27. And this is Jesus talking. He says, he replies, what is impossible for people is possible with God. The very thing that you tried to do on your own by yourself, it was impossible. When God gave you that word that what you would do, it was big and it was it was a God dream. But it was a God dream because it was meant for God to lead you, God to show you, God to protect you, God to provide for you. The moment you try and do things on your own, you're going to fail. But if you link with God, he will do the exceedingly and the abundantly through all you can ask, think, or imagine. Okay? Um, so this time has come to an end. Play it back if you need to. Okay? I'm going to um, put the, the scriptures down and below um i'm also going to i'm going to put uh 
the the verses for David and Goliath. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to label it so you have an understanding what you're looking at. And then work from there. Work from there. Even if you're a babe in Christ, it's not too early for you to learn how how to link with God and how to do battle with God. It's not too late. You're not too young in Christ. As a matter of fact, it's the perfect time. The Bible says um, to train to train your children while they're young. And when they get older, it will not depart from them. So if you start while you're just getting in Christ, as you move further in Christ, you're going to see how fighting battles was so much easier for us who have been in Christ for a minute because we we late bloomers out here. So, but if you get in here early and you start building history with God early, you pretty much are getting shot out there, okay? So, I'm Aunt Camp. Um, if you're new, welcome to I Am Redemption, where redemption is for everyone. You just have to seek it, all right? Uh, enjoy your week today. It's Monday. Have a great day. Stay prayed up. Stay praying over your families and believe that God does work all things work all things. Believe that. Believe that. He believe, he works all things. All right, you guys. Have a great day. Bye.